So we're, I'm just going to dive right into this. So um, this is something that I put together for eXp University in the uh, attraction series. And uh, I, apparently it had a really great high rating. I've been invited back to do it multiple times. So that's where this, this training comes from. Um, I'm not going to go through every single thing on the deck because it's 915 and we'll be here, you know, way past the hour. But yes, this will be recorded. We'll we'll send the link out to it and you guys are going to pull away with some definitely some golden nuggets. And this is something Pat and I have been uh, failing forward and learning and cutting our teeth over the years um, of being at eXp, right? No one comes into the company being a polished, seasoned recruiter. Let's just call it what it is. Attraction's one thing, but at the end of the day, when you're reaching out to agents, you're trying to recruit them to a brokerage. So look, all this <laughs> income disclosure, I'm not going to read this word for word. But this is part of the when we do these types of trainings, uh, because yes, there are people making a lot of money, but you know, there's, are, there are people that come in and get a, get a crack at it and they give up and you know, whatever they say about it when they leave. But we all know that it's just like selling real estate, right? It takes time, skill, persistence, competence, leadership. It's, it's a game of becoming and helping and, and really building an organization. So I'm going to go through the five steps and the most important is really how to approach the agents the right way. Um, and I always say the fortune is in the follow-up. So a little bit about me, 17 years in real estate. Uh, these two girls are the center of my universe, everything that we do together. I mean, it's all about them, right? I used to travel and go to events and all this stuff for years and years and years. And I, that helped me really build my brand and career over the years. But since we had Molly, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm 47 and you never know uh, when that day comes and it's no longer here. So I want to spend every moment I can with those ladies but literally, this is the question for you guys. Who's ready to take their revenue share income to the next level? Yes. That's a bold statement. And I think, Pat, you nailed it on the head. A lot of agents are coming into eXp, and they're not participating in this. They're not focused on it, right? It's like learning how to ride a bike. And when right. something makes you uncomfortable, you're not going to do it. That's exactly what, what happened to me, really. Um, it really it really came down to, um, I just didn't know what I didn't know. So um, building a list and always adding to that. This is no different than selling real estate, right? Building a database, nurturing that database, staying in front of that database. You're just adding one more tier to the program, right? Buyers, sellers, agents. That could be agents, brokers, team leaders, whatever the case may be. Buyer, seller, agent, buyer, seller, agent, right? We all know how to build lists of agents. They're everywhere. All their information is public record. You obviously want to start with the people that you know, and then the agents on the other sides of the deals. And then you can start reaching out through networking and getting referrals to agents and all that. But the big one of the biggest takeaways today is going to be question-based conversations. You have to be able to position yourself in a way that you're asking probing questions, right? And I'm going to give you a framework of how to do that. And then once you do have some interest, you want to set an appointment for them to see the, the presentation. And there's multiple ways they can see it. And then once from there, once they see some information, you want to do a third party validation. That's when you start inviting them into our world. And third party validation is it's Pat, it's Bob, it's me, it's Connor. It's different people in the organization that you can reach out to, to connect your prospect to, right? You want to connect people as quickly as possible to as many people as possible. So bringing them into our world, right? They don't know how all this works, right? Those of you that are new, you're still trying to figure out, you don't realize, but there's thousands of employees just ready to serve you that, that are in the cloud campus. But until you download the cloud and you get familiar with it, that's such a different way of seeking information. Most agents, they want to pick up the phone or they're going to drive down to an office. That's the two forms of communication. But the way that we communicate and the way that we compensate is what has completely disrupted our industry. The way that we close transactions is still the same. The traditional side of real estate never changed. The way that agents get compensated and the way that we collaborate and communicate at this company is what's just been lights out. I'll go ahead and open this back up. Love it. So, so building that list, you always want to add contacts to it. I started with the spreadsheet. I use CRM Grow now. Um, I've continued to add to it. I only use CRM Grow for agent conversations, and it's a combination of production and attraction recruiting. So... It's just a way that I stay in touch. I also put them in spreadsheets because I use a lot of spreadsheets. I know you guys are probably using tons of spreadsheets. So I like spreadsheets too. But the personal relationships are the number ones, the people that you know, right? You want to put them in a, into a list. You know, people that other agents know or other vendors, right? You have uh, preferred vendor partners, you know, mortgage brokers, title, insurance, contractors. Hey, who do you know that's a great agent, right? Hey, Ask can I have something? Absolutely. Jump in there. 
Hey, well, so I Chris just got a tip indirectly from Gene Frederick. It didn't, and what he's really vouching in this, in this program that's helping me out is he v- talks about, you know, of course, we all got our CRMs and our tech tools and everything, but he says, write a fresh list at the beginning of every single month on paper. And by doing that, you know, it helps you like revisualize it every month. And, you know, it's almost like a vision board or love chart on the wall. And he says, write a list of a hundred contact or prospects. And it is pretty powerful too, because, you know, I've got 400 in my, in my CRM grow, but a lot of them are buried and I don't see them and all this, but by actually struggling, trying to come up with a hundred contacts every single month, that's pretty powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And those of you that don't know Chris, he's been with us for uh, almost several years now to 2000 agent plus organizations. So he's definitely someone of contribution and value that um, we've all been growing with together. But Gene Frederick's the OG, right? Yep. Whatever Gene says is what we got to follow. He's, right. you know, him and Rob and Brent, like these guys are the number one recruiters in the world. Hands down. And they won't steer you wrong. At any brokerage in the entire planet, there are not people making the kind of money that these guys make. Right. right. Anyway, so agents on the other side of the deals, right? Building a relationship with them. And number one, being just a kick-ass agent, right? Being a step ahead of them, being that per just at the end of the deal, you want them to go, wow, what a great experience I had. Then you get the opportunity to continue to build that relationship, right? There should be a closing gift for the client and then a closing gift for the agent. Take them to lunch, find out what their needs are, find out what their challenges are right don't exp on them because at some point the conversation will come up mls board events i've met agents there new construction bus tours you name it right just go down the list there's tons of events locally that you guys can get to the the training events are great because you can you can call agents you've done deals with you can call agents in the market and just say hey look so and so is going to be doing a training here are you open to going Right. If it's a big name or a big producer in your market, most likely those agents will want to go. Right. If it's a hundred million dollar producer and these agents are doing, you know, three, four, five, ten, you call them up, say, hey, so and so is, you know, did a hundred million last year. He's doing a, you know, how he farms his database or how he farms a market and does, you know, nurtures his database. Would you want to go to that training? If they're in real estate and they're serious, they're going to want to go hear what a hundred million dollar producer is doing to market to his database. So training events is going to be your number one invite. Right. If you if you're calling agents and just hitting them with the XP, you're going to get a lot of resistance. So training events is a good one. All right. Click, click, click. Wealth chart, building a wealth chart. Um, Rob Flick, you can just go to YouTube, type in Rob Flick wealth chart. It's super important. It's a visual scoreboard. It's like. It's like, right, any game's got a scoreboard and a clock, but it keeps you visually honed in on it. Right. Pat and myself, I mean, I we just did a bunch of updating, so I've cleared so much stuff out of the office and all that but i have a wealth chart sitting over here um the bigger your wealth chart the bigger your vision board is the more focus you're going to put into it right if you don't build a wealth chart or you don't even have a spreadsheet with agents in it you're just not taking this serious you have to treat this like a business you have to nurture a database of agents that's it either you do it or you don't kind of like selling real estate right right amen <laughs> yep. hot list what chris was mentioning was putting together a list, right? You need to have a a hot list of focus, right? I love that because Gene Frederick says, if you don't write it down, it doesn't exist and it's not going to happen. I even like just little sticky notes, like little things I write down, right? And then obviously I have a notepad that I keep, uh, you know, notes in too, but it's like things that hit my mind. I know that if I write them down, that the chances of them happening are, are extremely higher than not writing them down. So it keeps you focused. It keeps you moving forward. But it also holds yourself accountable because trust me, my first year, I put four people up on that board. It wasn't, it wasn't impressive. I made the excuse of, oh, I'm busy. Oh, I'm doing this. But guys like Pat and Rob and Gene and all them, they put their foot down and they never let up. Like they literally, from the time they woke up to the time they went to sleep, they never stopped thinking about it. So if the focus isn't in the front of the mind and you don't have some tools to help keep you focused to move forward, then it's just, you're just going to put it in the back seat. A couple of years are going to go by and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I wish I would have paid attention to this more. That's the thing that we always hear with agents because it makes you uncomfortable, right? If you've never, if you've never recruited or reached out to try to bring people to an opportunity, it can be difficult, right? And then if you start getting the different negativity or feedback that you don't like, then you're just like, oh, well, that's not working for me. And I'm just going to put it on the shelf and not worry about it. And 
a couple of years later, you know, you go to a build conference and you see someone that joined the company and a year or two after you, and they're, they're absolutely crushing it. This is happening with or without you. So that's something that I've done over the years. I've kind of gone, I focused on it, then not focused on it, focused on it, then not focused on it. So just staying consistent with it. I like to say failing forward, right? You're trying different things. You're having conversations. Oh, that didn't work. So here's the framework of really, this is the core of anything you're doing in real estate, right? It's a needs analysis. If you're talking to a buyer, what do they need? What are they, what are they trying to accomplish? What is their timeline? What are the hurdles they're facing? What are the challenges? No matter what it is, you're always going to follow this framework. So whenever you talk to an agent, it's no different. So Rob knew this, Gene knew this, like all these guys that have been recruiting for other companies for years and years and years, they already knew how to do this. So as you're figuring it out, if you've never been coached or trained on how to recruit agents, this is how this is what you follow. It's like the rules of Fight Club. What's rule number one, Pat? We don't talk about Fight Club. What's rule number two, Pat? Right, right. We don't talk about Fight Club. This is the superpower that Gene Frederick has bestowed down to us. Tell me about yourself. What's happening now in your life and your business? Man, what do you enjoy most about that? God, I saw your photos on Facebook that you guys went to Greece. How amazing was that trip? Man, that trip was amazing. Dad. But Gene, tell me about this EXP thing you guys have been doing. I tell you what, man, we'll get back to that. But hey, what'd you enjoy most about that trip? Because we're thinking about going to, to Greece, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, literally not talking about EXP is the way that you get in deeper conversations with agents. That's right. It really is. Because the name of the game today is about value and helping them accomplish their goals. Six years ago, no one had ever heard the word EXP. And when you said EXP, it was like, what? What is that? That's right. Right. The conversation was different back then than it is today. Right. The company has exploded. It's out of obscurity. It's a household name. Right. We're, we're next to Zillow. We're actually in a better spot because we don't have any debt. I think we're probably the only debt free real estate brokerage in the world, which is incredible. Yes. So there's a lot of great benefits and a lot of people are so excited about EXP. It's just like, ah, EXP. Oh, they got all this great stuff. Blah, blah. It doesn't work that way, guys. You'll get to the EXP conversation at some point. And then I'm going to give you some specific scripts here in a moment. Um, but A, what would you alter? What would you change, right? This is uh, getting into that negative, not saying negativity, but that framework of positive present, negative present, negative future, positive future. So that's what you're trying to uncover throughout a needs analysis. Hey, what's happening now, right? All the, all the fun, positive stuff. Great. What challenges are you facing, right? Do you have that support in your brokerage business that can help you get to where you want? What is it? 50 transactions a year? How about 100 transactions a year? Wow, I don't, I don't know how I'd ever get 100 transactions a year. Hey, I'll tell you what, I could probably connect you with uh, you know, Jeffrey Whitespear. I'm on a team with him. They're on track to do 600 home, home sales this year. If I could get that dude on a phone call, would you, would you take that conversation, right? We're, we're taking the point of how we can help somebody get where they wanna go, but we're gonna leverage eXp as the tool, the platform that can help them because that's literally what it is, right? This is an expansion platform. This is an expansion brokerage that puts you, the agent, at the center of it, that you have all the tools and the entire thing behind you, the whole company behind you to build with, right? We, we plugged into an international company. I never thought about outside my local market, maybe for a referral here and there, but there are no really borders at, at our company anymore. Right. So it's, it's moving them through, through that needs analysis, question-based conversations, Right. If you're if they're a team like, hey, what, what's the biggest impact to your team right now? What are you struggling with? What, what are the challenges? Oh, well, our lead flow went down or this or this. Obviously, the market changed. So that's creating a lot of new challenges for people. And then setting the next step isn't always about EXP. It's the next conversation, the next training, the next text message, the next email, whatever it is, no matter who you're talking to, you always want to set an expectation of a further conversation. Right. It could be about EXP. When we get to these next two, uh, next, uh, when I get to the scripting here in a moment. So the appointment to show EXP explain, there's a lot of different ways that you can get the information in front of them. You can invite them to a presentation. It could be in the cloud. That would be really cool. Um, I'll show you some uh, percentages here in a moment, but if you can get face to face, belly to belly, that's always going to be the best. The second is zoom. If you can get them to a lunch and learn, everybody has different opinions about how to do it, but 
it's it's what's going to be most comfortable for the prospect, right? If they're a big mega producer, they're not showing up to a lunch and learn, a public event looking at eXp Realty. It's not going to happen. Right. So you've got to be very aware of your prospect and the type of business they have. And if they are looking at eXp, you want to respect their privacy. So webinars are great. One-on-one -on -one Zooms like this, where you pull the slide deck up and have either someone else do it. You can do a press play presentation. Um, local events, like I just kind of reiterated, but those are the different ways that you can get it in front of them. Um, I don't send videos unless we've already had a deep conversation and they're wanting more information, right? Then I'll send a video. You know, back in the day, it was like, we're shooting videos, everybody. And people are like, I'm not watching this hour and a half thing. You know, it was like, it just right. didn't work that way. <laughs> yep. Yep. I remember those days. So I touched on this earlier. Um, the third party validation is, is huge. It really is. As fast as you can get them connected to other people, right? Connect them to corporate staff. Eric was texting me this week. They had a broker. It's like, I have a lot of knowledge about eXp Realty and how to structure teams coming in and all that but I've never owned a brokerage, right? I operate in a hybrid model that eXp presented to me. So someone that's a broker owner with 10, 15, 20 agents, and they're seeking information, you've got to reach up and connect them to people either at corporate or other brokers that have made the move over. That's that third party validation. And trust me, people are willing to get on the phone or get on Zoom, especially from the corporate level top down. So reach out to others, reach through others, to get to other people at the top of the, I wouldn't say the food chain, at the top of the company, but you really got to connect people kind of where they are, right? If they're a team lead with five agents and they do 20 million a year in production, you need to be reaching out to agents or team leads that are at that level or higher so they can share that experience and talk about how they took their business from 20 million to 50 million to 100 million EXP over the last three years. That's a very powerful story, but it also it'll validate the decision for this person to make to come to the company and come thrive. But you got to leverage the people around you. Reach out, reach up. So here's Brent Gobe's numbers. Face-to-face, 86% -face, conversion. So if you call an agent and say, hey, whatever the, whatever the conversation is to get them to want to see a presentation, book it at a, at, a, at a meeting place somewhere that's neutral. Show up with your laptop. This is what Brent Gove did, right? He called, he called people that he knew. And said, hey, have you seen this? You have to stay at Cobalt Banker forever. You have to take a look at this as a respect, as a friend, right? Brent Gove had, like Gene, had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of agents, literally, that he had relationships with. So they already had a built-in database. <clears throat> so Zoom, 68% conversion. That's the next best thing is to get face-to-face -face with people, at least through video. Um, but sending videos, you're going to have about a 27% kind of closing ratio. But th the name of the game is face-to-face. -face. But here's... Yeah, and, and, and Ian, real quick, I just kind of want to share the story real quick. I know this is great stuff, yeah. though. Uh, I want to share the story and uh, let you have a little water break. But, uh, uh, you know, whenever I um, um, approached Ian about, uh, you know, EXP, uh, you know, we had a, a, a pretty good relationship because he was my coach in, in, um, in real estate investing and uh, was trying to add that to my, uh, to my real estate business uh, whenever I first got started. And... Uh, you know, I made my list. Whenever I first joined, I made my list and Ian was at the very top of the list. And so I reached out to him and, you know, shared the opportunity, what I was doing and why I had to make a move and where I went. And I knew Ian loved passive income. And, uh, you know, I, I, I first thought of Ian because of the revenue share. I was like, man, I know he loves, you know, flipping houses, but I know he loves buying and holding, you know, holding houses and apartments and, and all that good stuff for cash flow. Uh, he's looking for cash flow. And I said, hey, this is a great way to, you know, to add some more cash flow to your book of business, you know, take a look at the video, let's talk. And, we had a few conversations and then I set them up with Rob Flick for like a four hour coffee meeting up in Dallas because they were both up in Dallas. Right. And so I knew, you know, I, I, I had to get into the next step, third party validation with Rob Flick. I knew it was going to be game over. Uh, I didn't know it was going to be a four hour meeting, but after that four hour meeting, Ian's like, I'm all in, right. I'm all in. So, so use the, use the process. Trust us guys. The process works, right. You know, make your list and expose that agent somehow. And I did that. Uh, and then get them to, uh, you know, third party validation. And uh, I knew Rob Flick was up there. And I was like, my goodness, hey, Rob, you know, do you have 15, 20 minutes to meet with one of my rock stars uh, about EXP? He said, absolutely. So I connected the two together. And four hours later, they had an amazing meeting, right? And built an a, a amazing relationship, uh, you know, back in 2016, whenever Ian joined. And so uh, the process works. So yeah, so that's. I yeah, that was February 11th. And that's so crazy that we remember dates and times at this company. Yes. There's yep. <laughs> I mean, there are literally milestones in your life. Like I met, I met Rob Flick 
on February 11, 2016, spent four hours with him. And you'll never forget I that know day. who Rob Flick is. He's the number one revenue share earner in the company with 20,000 agents. Yep. And he makes anywhere from $750 to $1,000 per agent per year. So do the math. Yep. Pretty significant. So here's where the rubber hits the road, guys. And this is where the title of my presentation came from. Fearless prospecting the right way. So I've I've hired coaches over the years. I've done everything wrong. I've learned so much, but I can tell you this, the takeaway for me is it's it's the internal once the once you internalize that needs analysis, you have a framework to have conversations. Because in the beginning you don't know what you don't know. You haven't had any training. It's just the same thing as riding a bike or drafting a race car or selling real estate. You didn't know what you didn't know. The first time you wrote a contract, you're a little bit nervous about it, right? First time yep. you sent it off, you're like, ah, oh, I hope that's right. <laughs> you know, yep. that it's I the same that. thing with, with recruiting agents. So it, it's the same thing with recruiting to any opportunity or business. But <clears throat> here's a framework for you to understand, a direct approach and an indirect approach. So I like the indirect approach first because it lowers the guard. I'll share a quick story with you. I yeah. sold some antique chairs on Facebook Marketplace yesterday. Uh -huh. The guy was messaging me, lives in Plano. We're going back and forth. So once I agreed to meet with him, I checked out his profile. Guess what? He's a real estate you, agent. Oh, I love it. So I made sure I had my EXP hat on. So I got yes. there. I'm sitting there. We're talking. He's like, oh, EXP. I was like, oh, cool. And he was in a Tesla. He's like, oh, you're in real estate? I said, yeah. So I didn't start with EXP. He asked right. me, he's like, well, what do you do? I was like, I went the kind of the other direction. All right. It's like, oh man, I'm I've been really primarily focused on the investing niche. I've been flipping houses for forever. I've uh, evolved, you know, gotten into a multifamily new construction. Do you invest? Oh, you know, the story is, you know, I don't remember what he said. He's like, no, I did a couple houses and realized I didn't want to do that. It was too much work. Yeah. So then he started asking me questions. Well, interesting. What, what do you do with, with real estate? I said, well, single family houses over the hedge fund. And it opened up the conversation, but I didn't start with EXP. There you go. I started with something different. Yep. And then I asked him questions. And then that two, three minutes we spent together, it's like, all right, I'm S setting the next step. Yep. He's like, hey man, well, let's get, he said it. Hey man, let's get together. I was like, I was like, great. I'll hit you up. We'll go have some coffee. Awesome. Love it. That's the way to do it. Right so he there. mentioned DXP. I talked about something else. He mentioned it yes. again. I talked about something else. So that's a very indirect approach. So you can, there's a lot of different questions that you could lead with in an indirect approach, but it's more about building a relationship first, because I'll never forget this. I saw a training. Um, this was, you know, what, one of the great cool benefits of going to the shareholder meetings and, um, and uh, EXP con or the breakout sessions, right? All the yes. big mega producers, the, you know, top revenue share, you know, team sizes, they're in these breakout rooms, giving you just fire of what they've done to build these businesses. Right. And one of the things that, um, Gosh, I'm drawing a blank on his name. He's part of the, the Kindred crew. Albie, Albie Stasek. Oh, oh Stasek, yeah. He's like, yeah. look, he goes, you got to think of, you got to think of approaching agents with the cheese and whiskers approach. Anybody ever heard the cheese and whiskers? Well, here's the, here's the deal, right? If you, if you break off little pieces of cheese and put them out, what, what comes? The mice will come out, right? Right, right. Right, you're just dropping a little bit of pieces of cheese. And in our world, it's value. It's value, a training, a connection to a top producer, a tool, right? What, what can I hand you? What can I help you with that's going to give you value that you're going to come towards me, right? That's the cheese strategy. What happens when the, the, the cat comes running up all hot and furious? They all scatter. Yep. Right? When those whiskers coming in hot and heavy, they're all gone. So that's the, uh, that's the kind of metaphor for when you're recruiting agents to an opportunity to EXP Realty, right? If you come in hot and heavy about EXP, it's just, right? They, they, they don't understand it. They're not in it, meaning they don't, they're not inside the company. They don't see the collapse. They have no context of what it is, nor do they care. And Gene talks about the gate of change. Yes. That gates up. It doesn't matter what you say, what you do. So the indirect approach will always win. I did a deal with a Remax agent been probably two years now. Not one time have I brought up EXP. This guy's like a Remax lifer. <laughs> but every time I call him, he picks up the phone. Hey, Ian, how you doing? He's excited to talk to me. 
I've taken an indirect approach with him. If he joins EXP, behind, fine, it is what it is, but I haven't prospected him yet. So let's flip that coin real quick. Doesn't matter where you are in a conversation. It could be cold, it could be warm, it could be a friend, it could be whatever, but you have to ask it like this, man, I'm dying to know, what have you heard about EXP lately? Not what do you know? We don't, we know they don't know, right? You really right, don't. Right. Agents at the company don't know. Come on. <laughs> hey, so what have you heard? And it's enthusiasm. Hey, Pat, what have you heard about EXP? And let them respond. Hey, are you open to learning more? A yes or a no? If it's a no, you're right back to an indirect. Right. You flip, literally, it's a takeaway and you just, you just move on. There is no are you sure you don't want to learn? Are you sure there's like, then you're trying to sell, right? The, your, the whiskers come out. Love it. Th this is the game right yeah, here. Question-based conversations. When you do want to prospect them, approach them about EXP. It's like, hey, what have you heard about EXP? Have you heard about anything? Did you watch any of the Inman news? You're asking questions, asking questions. Hey, are you open to learning more? about how this company could impact X, Y, and Z. So if you don't know what their challenges are, you have no idea how to prescribe a solution to their challenge. So Pat, I'm gonna stop it right here just because, yeah. you know, just for time sakes, but this right. is really the, the biggest takeaway, the conversation, right? That's where the rubber hits the road. And, and agents, if, if you're not taking a step back and really internalizing what this company, the value proposition is to agents and then finding out a way to help those agents, right? Your approach is off. And then the people that have been recruiting at the highest level in our business, there's, there's always some type of value conversation, right? No matter who it is. So that's the name of the game is, is, is asking questions, probing conversations. I mean, probing questions, yep. question-based conversations. And then when the, and then when the, the, the time is right. Hey, what have you heard about EXP lately? Are you open? I love it. And if it's a yes, then you have different ways to get them in front of the presentation, so on and so forth, and kind of take it from there. But I believe yeah. that this right here is the 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 biggest takeaway that I can give you guys today. This is great, man. Good stuff as always. And uh, uh, man, that's powerful. And, and uh, you know what, what I was telling with Ian, I was talking to him uh, before the call. Is um, you know that's a great presentation right there. If you guys haven't seen it, it's recorded. You know that's that that's. The exact model of um, of how to build a massive revenue share organization, and so I just kind of want to share um, my screen real quick because uh, I want to go through. Um, let's see, let me share here real quick. I want to go through uh, a little PowerPoint um, that I made back in the day whenever uh, Randy Donnell and I used to do um, the maximum experiences, right? And so we used to actually um, um, train in person. Um, agents, you know, two or 300 agents, all EXP agents, how to build a massive revenue share organization the right way. And so uh, let me just kind of share a, a few little slides. And I know Ian pretty much hit kind of everything um, that's in my slide deck, but I've got a few slides that I kind of want to bring it all home um, to help you guys get motivated because uh, that's what it's all about, right? It, 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 is it hard um, to, um, to uh, build a massive revenue share organization? It, it is. Um, but is it going to be worth your while financially? Absolutely. So just a little bit about me. been selling real estate in San Antonio for uh, 10 years. Started my career at a boutique brokerage firm. Uh, first year, I sold about $3.2 in production. Second year, $12.5 million. Got that life-changing phone call almost seven years ago uh, to have an open mind to uh, take a look at a new business model that was disrupting the real estate industry and changing the way that agents were being compensated. I had to make a move and uh, I saw EXP and I said it was a no brainer whenever I met Rob Flick, Scott Lewis and um, Gene Frederick. And so fast forward, I've been with EXP. I, I track it as months, um, 83 months. Uh, next month will be 84 months, uh, seven years uh, because each month gets better and better. I've personally sponsored 60 agents that's grown into a revenue share organization of 5,148 agents spanning 47 states, five Canadian provinces and 16 countries and growing. And so uh, very, very, very um, big. It's it's a lot of fun. We're having fun. And so I kind of call it the six steps of effective Asian attraction and pretty much hit every single one of them. Um, but, you know, guys, it all starts with our mindset, you know, and how to, uh, you know, how to build your list. You know, of course, we've got scripts and and I don't want to go, um, you know, in, in respect of everybody's time. I don't want to go over a single uh, bullet point here, though. Um, but um, I want to kind of get to some main points of my slide deck here, but you know, I think one of the biggest ones is mindset. You got to have, you got to be in the right frame of mind to talk to agents. You know, it's a little bit different than talking to buyers and sellers. 
Um, but you know, guys, you're, it's a relationship business, and we're just helping these agents grow their business, right? That's my main question: is I wanna I wanna help you grow your business. If I can help you grow your business, then I think EXP is the is, is the right place for you to be. I think EXP is the the best brokerage firm that every single agent should be at. Uh, and if they're not at EXP, they need to be at EXP. But let me help them, um, you know, with uh, growing their business. And I love this phrase, and I got it from Gene Frederick. On a scale of one to 10, one being the worst, 10 being the best, where are you at in your business, right? And I let them answer, and then I just shut up, and they throw up all over me, right? Well, I'm at a six. Oh, my goodness. Why are you at a six? Why are you at a 10? Well, because my brokers, they just raised their caps and splits, and, and I lost out on three deals last month, and this and that, and it just they'll throw up all over you, right? And you just listen and help them with whatever they need to help them grow their business, right? List building, just like what, uh, you know, Ian was talking about, it all starts with building that list, something so simple, right? And I tell these agents, God, you've been in the business for three or four years, go to your MLS and print off all of your deals that you've done and start talking to those agents on the other side of that transaction, because you built a great relationship with those agents on the other side of the transaction, right? And so put it on paper, whatever you need to do, right? You know, like Ian said, he's got Excel spreadsheets, you know, CRM Grow, whatever you want to do, put it down on paper like Brent Gove, right? Brent Gove has, you know, um, uh, notepads of, uh, you know, of, of all of his agents and, and uh, you know, how, uh, uh, how he's been able to grow, right? Your warm market, right? Start with people that you know, ask your friends and family, um, you know, ask title, um, you know, title companies. You know, I got this from Gene Frederick, um, you know, call up your title company or, or call up uh, uh, a title company that you don't even do business with and just say, hey, listen, you know what? I'm looking to add a few rock stars in your market to, your, to, your, um, to my real estate team. Who is the newest up and comer? realtor in your market that you're doing business with right now that I would that I can love to talk to right who's the newest up and comer rock star right there's a lot of those rock stars out there that come into the business the first and second year they just crush it and explode it right you want to talk to those agents right there I love that script right there you know talk to lawyers CPAs if you guys don't know who Kyle Handy is well, he's a rock star now at EXP. He didn't even give me the time of day to this talk. Is such a great story. Yeah, One of my to talk about favorites. EXP. Oh yeah, this is huge, guys. And so we had the we had the same CPA, um, Ed Guerrero in San Antonio, and I went to his mother. I tried to go around Kyle Handy to go well, to Kyle. Her. Blew you off for over a year. He blew me off for over a year, guys, and he didn't even let me have a five minute phone conversation. He he didn't even answer my phone calls or reply back to my text message. I had to go around his mother. His mother said, no, Kyle would never go to EXP. He's a broker. He's got his own team. He would never even give me the time of day. Okay. So what did I do? I went to our, I knew that he had the same CPA as I was using. I went to Ed Guerrero and said, Ed, can you please help me set up a lunch meeting with me, you, uh, and, and Kyle Handy? I just want one hour. I'll pay for the lunch. Just give me one hour. He won't give me the time of day. He goes, yeah, sure. Let me call him up real quick. Yeah, I got a great relationship with him. He literally called up Kyle Handy and said, hey, I think you need to talk to this guy, Pat Hayes, about the EXP. I do his taxes. I see his numbers. I see his revenue share growing. I think it would be beneficial. He just took one hour to talk to Pat about EXP. And what happened? Ed Guerrero helped us set that one-hour lunch appointment, and I closed Kyle Handy that day at lunch. And Kyle is a massive agent at EXP now. Massive, right? I changed his life, right? But I, I couldn't have done it without my CPA. Right. So get creative. Right. Attorneys, CPAs, doctors, you know, financial planners, you know, they all know realtors. Right. And again, title companies, you no know, inspectors, you know, mortgage partners, stagers, real estate, uh, you know, attorneys, moving companies. They all work with. Other, I just got a new agent the other day from uh, uh, from, from my mover that, uh, you know, I've been uh, you know doing deals with um, ever since I joined uh, or ever since I got into the industry about 10 years ago. Uh, he always sends me agents. Hey, this agent's not doing too well. They're pissed off at their broker. This, you might want to give them a call. Absolutely. Thanks for the lead. That's what I did. Right. So tap in your resources again. You know, you can attract agents on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, social media is huge. I've attracted a ton of agents um, back in the day, like Matthew Ron. If you don't know who Matthew Ron is, he's a big agent uh, in uh, North Carolina. And uh, we connected on Facebook six years ago. He was with Caldwell Banker and we just built a great relationship on social media. And we probably had, 10 or 15 conversations on social media before we even picked up the phone and, and talked to each other, right? And then I brought in Dave Gagnon and uh, Dave Gagnon did a three-way phone call and helped me close Matthew Ron, right? And so I followed the process. That's exactly what I did. You know, creating new contacts, you know, again, open houses are huge. I saw somebody put a, uh, a little um, a message in the text chat about, you know, he stopped somebody's, you know, uh, open houses and, 
and, and build a relationship with those agents, right? Do that. Even though you know, if you don't have a buyer interested in that house, right? Just go in there and take a look at the house yourself. You know, you never know, right? And build that relationship, exchange business cards. You know, again, scripts, there's a ton of scripts that, uh, you know, that you can use. I really don't um, use a certain script. You know, every kind of script is different, you know, depending on the agent that you're talking to. Um, but you can also go to brentgo.com and go use a lot of his scripts. There's a lot of uh, information there, brentgo.com. You can take a screenshot of this, uh, take a picture of this. Uh, hey, Pat, uh, let me jump in here because script yeah. is one thing. So a lot of agents are like, oh, I want the script. I want the script. Like, here's the reality. Scripts are just different ways to approach people. Yep. That's all they are, right? It's just a That's lead. It's a, it's a lead into a conversation. So yep. you've just got to get damn good at talking to people and asking questions. Those That's, are the that, scripts. That, that, if you ever it. wonder, like, what do I say? Ask a question. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, I, I don't say the exact same thing every single time I talk. Yeah. To it, I and it's all changed and evolved script. over time, right? Yeah. You know, I, I've read 15 different scripts and I kind of take a little bit here. Yeah, with, little bitty pieces from there. different yeah. things that little different pieces people from each say. Script. Yeah, exactly. So it, a script is more of an approach. So right. I love right. this one, Pat. I still, uh, man, I still have this. Yeah, my, there you go. Read, back of my well chart. Yes, read this, guys. This is huge. There is no secret. I simply showed the plan to 1,200 people. 900 said no, and only 300 signed up. Out of those 300, only 85 did anything at all. Out of those 85, only 35 were serious. And out of those 35, 11 made me a multi-millionaire. Guys, this is huge. And right? it's real. 5,200 agents in my revenue insurance organization. Not every single one of them sells a house every month. Not every single one of them sells a house every six months, right? I've personally sponsored 60 agents. Right now, I've got 24 of those 60 agents that sold a house last month, right? But it still made me over six figures from the revenue share that EXP paid me monthly, right? So it's a numbers game, guys. It's a numbers game. All right, we'll wrap it up here. Guys, you got to practice, right? Just practice. Just print off some scripts and practice. Read them to your dog, to your cat, to your significant other. Read them in the mirror. You know, whatever you need to do, just read them, right? Just practice, right? I'll never forget whenever Scott and Trace Lewis threw me into the wolves to do an EXP presentation uh, myself. And, uh, you know, was it the best? No. But did I do it again? I did it again and did it again and did it again and did it again and did it again, right? And now that, you know, the EXP explained, you know, I could do it in my sleep. You know, I was listening to, uh, uh, Trey and Tyler do the uh, presentation yesterday, the Thursday executive overview, and they're absolutely crushed it, right? And it's the same words that I use as well, too, that they use, right? Hey, Pat. Yeah. I was going to say, I think it's Phil Hahn that has a um, role play in the world. I think it's like every Wednesday morning. Oh, really? Okay. So, so if, you, if you're looking for people to do role play in that, you know, just go look in the EXP events calendar. Okay. You know, Wednesdays, he does it for an hour or so. Oh, there we go. Oh, I love it. I love it. All right, guys, we got about five minutes. Here. I'm going to get through this here real quick. But again, you know, expose, 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 right? Share the opportunity. You know, lunch and learns, you know, uh, we've, done, we, we've done some big lunch and learns uh, where we pack the house agents every single Friday, Freedom Fridays, do the lunch and learns, have a lot of fun. Uh, if you can't do a lunch and learn, I use the modelexplained.com. Uh, that is the video of Brent Gove sharing the opportunity, which he does an amazing job. So you can use that one as well, too. Uh, then again, like Ian was talking about, you know, the uh, the, uh, the events, the EXP shareholders event, and then also EXP Con, uh, which uh, is a great way to uh, expose your agents, to see the excitement, to meet the leadership, uh, and have a lot of fun. And then uh, five reasons you didn't get your prospects signed up, you failed to follow up, guys. It's all about the F U F U F U follow up, follow up, follow up, right? Just like what Ian was saying, follow up, guys. Let's see. Let me just get to, uh, yeah. Then the wealth chart right there. You know, go go Google. Uh, you know, Rob Flick's wealth chart training. Go make yourself a wealth chart. Uh, another little example right there's there. There's the first one. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's there's oh, 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 yeah. There's. Listen, oh, let me see if I can go back the other way. There it is. There's the first one right there. There's. There's mine. That was uh, several years ago in my office right Remember there. Remember I said earlier, like Pat was very, very dedicated. Pat put his foot down never. I mean, and literally it was just, this is what we're doing. This is going to get us to where we want to go. And it was just sheer determination. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cause we all failed in the beginning. Pat, you, you remember you went to Gene, like Gene, I don't know what I'm doing, man. Yes. And what oh, did Gene tell just, you? You're just yeah, talking was, too much. Yeah. Talk too much. Slow down to go fast. 
slow down, go fast. Because so, back then it was like, hey, do you have a, do you have an exit strategy? Hey, do you have any wealth? Like, hey, like, hey, we got revenue share. We got stocks. Oh, I, got, blah, blah, blah. I was throwing up. I was throwing up on them. Gene said, slow down to go fast. Let the video do the work. Get me on the phone. You're not the expert. And that's what I did. I had to tweak it up a little bit. I changed it up a little bit. And I started, I started growing extremely fast, right? Much faster than I was. You know, make a vision board, right? This was several years ago. My kiddos and I, we sat down and made a vision board. And I've checked off every single one of those except for two. I've checked off every single one of those except for two. And I'm ready to make another vision board. I'm ready, right? Thank you, Rev Share. If you understood residual income, you would walk through a brick wall to get it. So true. I didn't have any residual income. Especially now. Till the XP. Yes, exactly, guys. It's so powerful, right? You guys don't know who this guy is, Bob Mangold. He's one of my agents that I personally sponsored in uh, Phoenix uh, about six and a half years ago. He was kind of one of my mentors, coaches um, before EXP. And uh, he kind of helped me get my real estate business off the ground with some of his tools and trainings and systems uh, that, uh, that he had. And um, uh, we, we took advantage of it and built a really good relationship together. And he helped me really grow my business. And he had a bad accident uh, several years ago, fell off of, of his roof during a, a bad storm. And uh, um, God, he broke his hip, shattered his, his ribs, his, his uh, legs, broken arm. Uh, surprised, uh, you know, he didn't kill himself. It was, it was, it was a very uh, tragic accident. Uh, and he was laid up in the hospital bed for several months. And uh, thank goodness for the revenue share um, that paid a lot of his hospital bills, that paid a lot of his mortgages uh, because um, he wasn't able to do listing appointments. He wasn't able to do buyer appointments, obviously. Uh, and if you're in the situation as a realtor, Again, you're only as good as your last sale if you don't have any passive income. And thank goodness he had some revenue share uh, because it was a terrible accident. And uh, he was so thankful for the revenue share. Guys, this is what I want to hit on. That, Pat, that's... The only thing that kills frust frustration is action. I was on a Zoom call three or four years ago with Scott Lewis, and he said this. And it just, it, it resonated with me. And I was just like, wow. You know, because I get frustrated a lot too, guys. Hey, it's not easy, right? getting told no, getting told go kick rocks, get out of here, I'm happy where I'm at, you know, whatever it is, I've heard it all, right? The only thing that kills frustration is action. And if you guys don't know who he is, yeah, he's one of our EXP agents in the, uh, in the Fort Myers, uh, Florida, Naples, Florida, Hurricane Ian demolished his house, he lost everything. Uh, I was talking to his mom the other day, I was talking to him the other day, and he went back to his house the other night, he was so frustrated, he went back to his house the other night, and this was still hanging up in his office. <laughs> he took a picture and sent it to me. He goes, dude, thank you so much for, for sharing this phrase with me because you know what? I'm frustrated and I ripped this piece of paper off and I took, I took a picture and he sent it to me. And he goes, dude, I'm so ready to just to, you know, take it to the next level. He's frustrated because he didn't have any rev share. He's frustrated that he, he waited three or four years to start building his rev share whenever I told him to take massive action three years ago and he didn't. And so he goes, dude, I saw this. And I'm ready to take massive action. How many success stories do you need to hear before you start creating your own? Right? Powerful. One day you'll ask me how I'm able to live like I do. And I'll say, I tried to show you. And I'll leave it at that right there, guys. Guys, this is oh, huge. Powerful, yeah. This is huge right here. Right at the top of the hour. Ian, you crushed it, man. Thanks for... For everything that you do, guys, go out there, talk Got to it. People. Don't be afraid, right? Don't be afraid. We're all here. We're here to help serve and, and um, guide you and, and keep you motivated. That's why we do these. That's why we do these masterminds. I love it. I enjoy it. I love, um, you know, sharing success stories, sharing wins. You know, is it easy? Absolutely not. But is it uh, uh, financially, um, you know, worthwhile? Yes, trust me, it will be. Trust me. You know, it's definitely, definitely worth it, right? Let's have some fun. Let's grow this company we're all shareholders of. Let's make, you know, uh, uh, you know, impacts on the other agents' lives. Let's change their lives. I know those are big words, but guys, EXP has truly changed my life. And I can say that for a fact now. And I think I've demonstrated that, uh, you know, with the, the, the type of income that uh, EXP pays me just for, uh, you know, sharing it with a few agents back in the day. I wasn't, wasn't an expert recruiter at all, right? I had to learn a lot. I had two years of real estate sales experience whenever I found EXP and joined EXP. I just had to learn the model, learn, learn the process. And we just shared the process with you guys. So. Guys, take advantage of it. This is being recorded. Ian, great call, man. And we'll drop it on Disruptor. Yep, yep. Love you guys. Y'all go out and have a great weekend. We'll see you back here uh, next Friday. And uh, go out there, pick up the phone, talk to some of those agents that scare you. And let's change some lives. Love you guys. Take care, Ian. Thanks, guys. Later, man.